It's only now really sinking in that we're on the home stretch here in Create Above and Beyond. If you're wondering why production has stopped on the numbers, it's because we have enough. It happened really quickly, like within an hour while I was prepping for this episode. If my math is correct, we need 1,600 of each. And we're actually well over that on these because I stopped them at the drawers being at 1,600. Forgot that the hoppers need to clear out. So we got a surplus, not that we're necessarily gonna need it, but I did stop eight and three a little bit earlier, right around 1,600. And we're gonna take these in just a moment and we're gonna start melting them back down in the smeltery that I created in between the episodes where we're gonna make our computation matrices. Also between episodes, as usual, I beautified things with the factory blocks and I wanna give big kudos for a helpful tip in the comments on the last episode, which is with the matter condenser, okay? So we're feeding the sand in from the ender chest up here and you know, it's slowly but surely producing the matter balls. You can feed water into this thing, okay? Look at the speed right now. Look at the speed right now. Why don't they tell you just to feed water in? They're like, oh, make sure you choose an item that's not too valuable. It's like, okay, well, water. <laughs> what are you doing, guide for the game? Anyway, I feel like right now, let's get caught up on where we're at with all the numbers and then start to feed them. So buckets, and then that should check that off. And then I just yoinked some of the numbers out of our crafters as they were going so that I can at least uh, complete these tasks. I think the eights are automated. I think that these are automated. I think this one's pretty automated. I think the ones are fairly automated. Same with the twos, the fours, the fives, the sixes, the sevens, the nines, and the zeros, which leaves the next step. Look at this crisscrossing web, all done. Good to go. The next step is put them all into here. So the question is, of course, like what's what's the best way to equally insert into here? And you know what I thought? Just eat them. Just have them go off the conveyor belt and just go into the thing. So what I want to actually see is I'm hoping that these melt down very, very quickly. Okay? Not exceptionally fast, which is a bit of a concern. Okay. So it means I may have to make this incredibly slow low because if I put too many in, they might backlog and it won't be able to actually hold everything that I'm putting in, but in just, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And once this is so colorful, dude, once these all melt down, it should turn into the, what are you missing? Turns out I, I didn't grab a zero. That, that would probably help. There we go. <laughs> now, if we throw this in, I was like having a panic attack, like, uh oh, dude, that's crazy looking. Does it fill up more space? Oh, there we go. Okay, it's all in. Why is it not going down into the the fancy stuff? Oh, maybe it has to be in the proper quantities. Like maybe you need to have 10 of each for it to actually go into this. Okay, let's be smart about this and use the technology that we're supposed to here and do a rotation speed controller so that I can fine tune the speed on this thing rather than just having to uh, guess and check. I, uh, I started off by pre-wiring it, but I'm realizing and that was a mistake. So now we probably want to just have this going like really, really, really slow. And if you don't see what I'm doing, I'm sure you'll see in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna, gonna switch this to like negative three, maybe really, 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 really slow. Okay. And then we're going to extend shafts off of each of the sides here. Right. And the idea is that the numbers are just going to flow in because if you drop something into the smeltery, it will start to smelt. So that's, uh, that's what I'm counting on working and I hope it does. And then let's do this and this, and that way we don't actually, so we need, we need 10. So we just need to have four four, five, six, seven, eight, and we could just do that and then have three on each side here. And then we just have to run uh, conveyor belts, basically. I can't help but think that there is a slight risk that this is going to totally fail somehow as a strategy. But again, the, the thing is, I really need to be inserting everything at exactly the same speed. And this is how I thought of doing it. All right, well, let's just grab all the drawers and then we'll bring them over and put them all into place. In other news, it doesn't tell you what item is in what drawer. So the numbers are, they're gonna be just completely out of order and it is what it is. Oops. And cool. Okay, now it's uh, it's sort of the moment of truth and I wanna see if I can place everything down as quickly as possible. 
Okay, all right, here we go. Let me get the uh, let me get the andesite funnels, and what we want to. Oh wait, I don't want to be shifting. I can't be shifting. So boop boop boop, and then over here, boop 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 boop. One two three. Okay, is it happening? Is it happening? Okay, wait for it. Wait for it. Let me go over to the controller, and I want to see. Do they all go in? I might need to make sure that none of it. Yeah, yeah, they're going in. They're going. It's working. Yes, it should be completely equal pacing. And then again, I can fine tune the speed so that it doesn't overflow the smeltery. But I'm I'm hoping this should the smeltery, even though it looks like it's kind of full right now, I think it's just trying to display it in a way so that even though it's only one millibucket, you can still kind of see it and click on it in case you wanted to dispense it. I don't think we're actually actually at risk of the thing filling. I think that this is a good speed. We don't want to see it starting to pile up, right? We want to see it kind of, we don't want to see it completely empty and static, but as long as it's kind of always working on some stuff, this is a pretty good pace and we're inserting every number exactly in equal quantities. Okay, so once this hits 20 or 10 of each, it should finally go into the stuff that we're actually going to pour out once we have eight blocks worth in here. Wait for it. We're getting really close. We're almost there. We're at eights and nines. Once it hits 10 on everything, come on. I'm just hoping, I'm hoping once we hit 10 on everything. Yeah, there we go. Liquid computation matrix. We got it. Huge. Okay. So yeah, I'm pretty sure 1600 where is where it's at. So it means once this all dispenses, we'll have actually more than that. We'll have some left over, but yeah. All right, this is it. I'm going to I'm going to try to fine tune the speed here and just see if we can increase it at all and figure it out. Seems like negative 10 is a pretty good spot. I might be able to increase it a little bit further, but we're already up to half of one of the blocks. So by the time this episode is done, I think we'll probably have enough to pour out all eight of the computation matrices. So from here, let's move to the other side of the equation. We've been generating the, the matter for the matter plastics. And that's how we're going to make all of the all the stuff that we need like the spacesuit and whatnot. So how many do we have? We have uh, five stacks. I don't know, that might be actually enough to do everything we need, but we need to do uh, blaze cake. So we need to do like basically super duper heated uh, compacting. And the way that you do that is by feeding the blaze burner blaze cake. So I'm thinking like, why don't we just buy these? Why don't we just use our ample amounts of money in order to win? So that's why I have the trade station here. And let's go ahead and buy ourselves the blaze cake trade over here. Where is it at? It's somewhere. I know that you can buy blaze cakes right, right at the very end. They try to hide it from you. They're like, are you sure you want to do this? Instead of having to manually make blaze cakes. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure about that. So I'm not entirely sure. Like, is this where I actually want to set this up? But yeah, sure for now. So do blaze cakes stack is the question. If they don't, it's actually ideal. Do they stack? Frick. Why can't you be like actual cakes and not stack? This means I'm, I'm going to have to at least like I'm going to probably end up with more than I need, but it's OK. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. But isn't this just cool to watch the numbers just kind of fling off? into the into the smeltery, right? I don't know. I just, I, I've wanted to like spend more time appreciating what the mechanisms look like after we make them. And, and I didn't, I didn't really sit to watch, but I just think, you know, it's rudimentary, it's simple, but it's really effective and everything is going in in equal quantities and we're almost at one of the full blocks. Okay, anyway, back to the blaze cake. So we're gonna have silver entering here. And then what I'm thinking is, I don't know if we're actually going to specifically set up the compactor right here. If we have room, we might as well. We do have some room here. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a depot here. This is how I'm gonna prevent things from like just overproducing and going into huge stacks. So I'm gonna feed the blaze cakes into the depot here. And then I'll just get like a, a chest or I could get a drawer, I suppose, and just fill it with silver. So we have a queue ready to go, trading automatically for the blaze cakes, right? We can do that. And these will start auto generating. Um, but once it gets up to 64, actually, no. Once it gets up to actually way more stacks than I'm gonna need of blaze cakes. Um, is there a better way to do this? Perhaps if I use the brass item pipes, it will not create the same sort of issue with like just massive amounts of backlog happening. So I'll pump that in 
and then nothing else will go in and it should kind of just, uh, you know what, whatever. Once it runs out of money, it will probably be more than enough blaze cakes to be able to do any of the stuff that we could ever, ever want here. Kind of interesting here, right? We need a blaze burner and obviously you can right click on a blaze with the empty blaze burner in order to, to get one, but it also says that you can do mysterious conversion, which is like, can I? Can I throw this into a beacon beam and turn it into a, no. Now, why would you get my hopes up with something like that? It says mysterious conversion. Is the mysterious conversion in this case, just right click on a blaze? Boring, boring. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> All right, well, whatever. It's not too hard for us to find a blaze real quick and just pop it on in, right? Right, hello, blazes? <laughs> feeling a bit shy today. They they know I'm trying to trap them. There we go. Thanks, bud. Thanks for your cooperation. I promise that you will live on to have a very, very fulfilling time here making spaceship stuff. Who wouldn't want to do that? I'm actually just refreshing my memory on my setup here because I need to do the same thing, except instead of feeding coal, which I don't actually have any in here. Here, buddy, you're looking a little shivery there. Let me help you out. I need to do it with blaze cakes instead. So I need a comparator, a repeater, a clutch, and then rotation into the mechanical alarm. Now that we're back though, I bet we can pour out a full computation matrix block. Oh my God, almost two of them. Let's go. Here we go. Our first computation matrix. This thing should look very cool. Oh my God, look at this thing. Bro, this is what we've worked the entire series to get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other stuff that's in chapter five, like you could have done this earlier on, processing the oil, making this stuff. That's just, you know, getting the blaze cakes and stuff like that. But this, this is what we have worked the entirety of, I can't place it on the ground to appreciate it, which is sad, but this is what we've worked so long to be able to achieve. Man, that's pretty cool. For the first time ever, I'm, I think I'm gonna use the pump in order to drive off rotation to something else. I don't think I've done that before, but you know, that should be kind of a viable way of doing things. Let's put down the press here, maybe, and then basin underneath, but basin will be on top of the blaze burner. I'm hoping that this will work well enough. We can get everything else in. So that spacing, I think, works. And then we need to get, I made a mechanical arm already. So we need to get the mechanical arm doing that, and then there. Obviously I need to drive rotation into that as well. And then I need to do the whole um, comparator situation. I think this setup should work. So let's give it a test here. Connect that. All right, take the blaze cake, happy blaze. And then it locks up. There we go. So that'll start heating once we're feeding in the plastics. And then we're gonna dump it out into a drawer down below, I guess. And now we just need to get an ender chest here and hopper in uh, into the basin. Couple things, I could take off the repeater here and just use the comparator because it turns out when the blaze finishes with the blue state, it goes down to the orange state, which we see over in the nether. And that actually keeps this deactivated, even though it wouldn't properly be doing the recipe up here. So this way, when the blue state's no longer active, then it will feed another one in as soon as it turns to orange. The other thing is, why would I do an ender chest over here? Let me just take the matter condenser, right? Let me just take it and move it over and that'll be 10 times easier than, you know, dealing with keeping it over here. Now I'll just have to remember how I set up the modes and stuff, right? It was there, okay, perfect. And then we just, you know, put down the freaking water over here. Right? I think in this case, it actually does matter that the direction, right? Cause we want the water feeding in and unlock. I don't think we need the sand anyway. The water is like plenty. And there we go. Matter plastics, easy. That was pretty compact. I feel like that was, that was pretty, pretty space efficient right there. If you ask me and then we'll lock it up. All right, sweet dude. So yeah, this is gonna generate like much slower then, um, you know, we need to worry about having like a, a drawer. So basically once this uh, flows through a current buffer, then just having it feed in uh, should work fine. So we got 49 blaze cakes. There's a chance we'll go through them, but you know, we can always just add some more money into the system manually. And then look at us go, dude. 24 of the matter plastics. There we go. We've gone through the buffer or we can put everything else in. And I don't know exactly how many of these we need. I don't think it's that many though, right? Like the space suit only requires like two of the matter plastics per thing. And then the charge pad doesn't even require it. The oxygen tanks, do those require you even, even? No, it's 
it's just a bucket with oxygen. So you don't actually need very many of the matter plastics at all in order to construct everything. So let's go now though. And while this is all queued up and ready to go and automated, we'll go find some oil. I swear I've seen an oil spout at some point in this series. And I'm wondering if I can just find a black speck on the map and go to it that way. But I'm just like not seeing anything. I don't know, maybe it was underground here and I'm just misremembering. But you know, usually they're just like oil spouts popping out of the ground. I'm gonna have to fly around and see if I can just spot one. I just ran into a structure I haven't seen before. Oh, it even has the looter chests in it. This is kind of cool. What do you have? Is this like a, okay, this is some kind of like farming village area of sorts. Speaking of the buddy cards, I never really did do that. Everyone was like, you can get some really, really cool like uh, permanent potion effects and buffs and stuff. And then I just didn't do it. I'm so sorry. Let me get a lock of the sea fishing rod though and, a, and another rubber ducky. This is very important. I'm also realizing, you know, if I want to pump into an ender tank here, I should probably get some squid ink so I can get some black dye because it's got to have a, you know, it's got to be color coded with black dye for the oil spout, which I... Hey guys, how's it going? This is pretty cute. I would never slay you for feathers. I like how they, oh my God, they follow the mama duckling in a line. Okay, this is pretty cute. I'll leave you guys be. I gotta, I gotta find oil. Don't, don't go into oil. Otherwise it's probably not good for your feathers. Be careful, please. You know what? I just reread it and it said warmer biomes and then it just epiphany. It was in the desert where I saw the, uh, the oil before, 100%. It was over in this direction. Behold, black gold. You're gonna get us to the moon, buddy. Whether you like it or not. Okay, although, how does this work? Like, is it an infinite source in that if I just pump out of here into an ender tank, it's not gonna drain? Or do I have to hit it at a specific location? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. So we're gonna need fluid pipes. We're gonna need a pump. We're gonna need to load the chunks. We're gonna need an ender tank, um, which I'm gonna have to go get a squid ink for. And then we're also, cause I don't think, do I have any squid ink? Nope, I'm full out. All right, and then we're just, we're gonna have to set up remote power. So I made a few water wheels and we're just gonna do the old fashioned water wheel setup here in order to power this thing. I know we can make this more efficient using soul sanded stuff, but we're just powering one pump. This is probably overkill as it is. Let me go try to find a squid. Hey, there you are. Hey man, you don't mind dropping an ink sack, right? I don't think, we don't have looting. Do we have looting? Oh, we do have looting. I'm like mixing up series, but there we go. Thanks for your generosity, man. Gotta label this properly. I have no idea how this is gonna actually pan out here, but uh, let's say we just put a fluid pipe frick. Probably gotta be facing vertically. Let's just say that we do this and then we route the uh, pump off of there. And then we do a rotation speed controller like that. Cog wheel on top and um, route that over into here to spin that and then have it feeding into our ender tank. All right, well, this will be interesting to see if it, nope, doing do it the wrong way. All right, here we go. I think it's, it's pumping out the oil, but will it be able to maintain or will it just end up draining? Um, did it? Frick, it drained, this, it drained the block. I figured as much. I just don't know if oil can act like an infinite water source. I don't know, maybe maybe the key is just to stick the pipe like directly into the center or something like that. I just like, I don't know. Oh, am I in oil right now? Wait, what the? Whoa, what the frick? Do I need to put it down there? <laughs> I don't know how this works. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to manually, I, I've cranked up the speed and I'm just going to manually pump in oil basically until this thing uh, has a reasonable amount. And every time this disappears, we just add another bucket, you know? Alternatively, I could just, what was the boy? Oh, the, the freaking heck. The whole point of me setting up the system was so that the oil could be pumping just in the background. I could load these chunks and then go about my business. Why, why am I even even, why am I doing any of this? Why am I doing any of this? This is a waste of time. Probably just like can't, oh my God. You know what? Oil, good riddance to you. I'm going home. Finally, I'm gonna go through my unstackable fireworks. This is a really exciting time for us. And then wait for it. And then one more. And now, finally. Finally, I can stack my fireworks together. It's incredible. Okay, let's just hope that like, this is kind of enough oil for 
what we need. Otherwise, I'm going to have to figure something out and all the comments are going to be like, you're so dumb. There was an easy way to do this. You're a fool and that's okay. You've almost built a rocket, so we'll forgive you this time. That's because the comments are, they're going to be, they're going to be nice and they're going to be forgiving. I just know they will. Anyway, we've gone through the backlog there at 51 Matter Plastics. Pretty good. How are we doing over here? We're probably popping off. We got two more blocks. Let's dispense them. Why not? And that'll bring us to three out of the eight that we need. They dry up pretty quickly, probably because they don't actually dry. They look like they're still very, very fluid. Dang, dude, look at that. Look at that computation, three of them. So cool, so cool. I've just realized something, okay? If I go into all these challenges here, right, there's a check mark to click that says automated. When it comes to the oil, there's no check mark for automated. I'm so used to automating everything in this series. I was like, oh yeah, we're just gonna need lots of oil. We're gonna have to pump it up. It's gonna be awesome. I don't, it doesn't want me to. I'm just supposed to go manually fetch some oil. This is so counter to everything I've been taught, but that's what it wants and it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I I, I made the pyrolyzers, not the pyrolyzers, the, the fractioning stills in between the episodes. I just routed some power over to here and we're just gonna manually pump into the stuff and it's easy. Okay, so um, it's gonna be, it's like triple fractioning stills for this thing. You could even go more if you want to, but I'm just not gonna worry about it. So here's gonna be our first one. And then we'll just pump into it with the uh, ender tank like so. And now it should start processing the crude oil and it'll go into the heavy oil and it'll go into the light oil. Now from here, we reprocess both of those in two different fractioning stills. And that brings us to the next step. So I think I think I, I don't know if I need to do like the modular thing maybe in order to do this better. I mean, actually this could be kind of cool, right? If I do that there, I do this here and then I modular both of these, then I can have them both go into a final ender tank next to it. So let me do that. And then I just need to make one more. I hope I have enough gold. I do. God, I'm so prepared because I'm able to buy my way to victory. It's freaking cool. You and you, and then finally, Finally, we'll get another. I don't know. Do I need to put it in an ender tank? I'll just, I'll just do it. What kind of, what kind of dye are we gonna use for rocket fuel? I don't know if we've done a green one. We haven't done green, right? Let's see. This is not anything. No, perfect. Okay, so we can do that. Rocket fuel is uh, definitely a green looking thing. Well, let me. Okay, so hold on. Let me see if I do an output on this side. Which one is it gonna throw in? Uh, oh, I need to set it to like accept from the back, I guess, right? Auto input enabled. Okay, so you're gonna take the heavy oil. I don't know if there's a way to lock that though. And you're going to accept, oops, from the back. Nope, stop and auto input enabled, and you're gonna do the light oil. My concern is like once it runs out, I don't know if it'll mess with things, but okay, no, this is good. And then that's still processing in from the ender tank, which has almost completely drained. Great. <laughs> and then we're gonna have this auto export from this side, right? And this is going to auto export from this side. I have to set the auto, but we'll do that. And then export and export. And there's that. Cool. That's, yeah, that's refined fuel. That's rocket fuel right there. I mean, that was actually, that was pretty quick and easy. Are you, are you auto? Okay, it's auto exporting. Very good. The thing is, in order to complete this challenge, I am supposed to fill a bucket, but the way I, I need to do like a different machine in order to do that. That's such a silly, unnecessary step, but it's not gonna let me do it until, <sighs> Are you gonna force me to do this? We'll work on that in between episodes. For now, all that matters is we're getting rocket fuel. And that was pretty simple. What's also definitely fun though, is that this is out of oil already, other than the bucket that I just put in. So that's, that's rough. Feel free to let me know how much rocket fuel I'm actually gonna need. And I, I, I do know that <laughs> a lot of people have left comments throughout the entire duration of the series saying, make sure you bring fuel to get back from the moon. But then I say to that, well, isn't the end of the series just to live on the moon? So it's kind of weird. Probably I'm gonna do a little bit of manual labor in between episodes just to finalize the whole rocket fuel situation. But why don't we start to manufacture all of these components here? We're gonna need just like a variety of shapes and sizes of different mechanical crafting 
interesting arrangements. So let's start off with the the plus sign, I guess, to begin with. I'm just gonna basically do these all manually here um, because I think that'll just be the easiest way to do it. Let's make a space suit here. Okay, so we need a diving helmet for this and then it's just basically like two matter plastics and two of the golden sheets and then something else in the middle for each of them. Which side is which? Okay, so it's that, that, and boom, boom, and then diving helmet in the middle. And now very slowly, I could have put this somewhere else where the things are spinning quicker, but also we're gonna end up doing, I think we're gonna need 24 of them for the biggest recipe that we're gonna need to, to make for the guidance computer. Um, And then the boots we'll do there, and boom, boom, and that. And there we go, we got ourselves some space booties, and boom, 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 leggings. And then the chest plate is the only one that requires a little bit of a special thing because it needs to have um, the ability to hold, hold air. So we have a copper back tank and then the same old, same old on the other places. There we go. Looks like a f an Enderman face is looking at me there. And in order to fill this thing up, we actually do need to do one more machine that uh, generates oxygen for us. But hey, there we go. No rewards. I don't get any reward. I uh, find the spacesuit itself is is a reward. But yeah, filling the tank of oxygen requires like a, it's a bit of a chemical reaction that we have to do here. But uh, you know what? We will worry about that later. And instead, we will just do the other stuff. Hopefully I arranged this correctly. As long as everything's flowing into the one thing, it should be good to go. So I'm thinking let's start from this side here. Okay, that's a pretty easy one to be able to make. Rocket linking device, done. And then the other thing here that we needed to make in that was the rocket fueling station. So we need a couple diamond gears. All right, bro, we're just, uh, we're knocking these out. I wonder if I'm actually gonna have enough of the plastics in order to do this. Okay, some of this stuff, I'm gonna wait until next episode because it's like, it's gonna be a subjective, depending upon how it is that we actually want our rocket to, to look. Um, So yeah, I don't know how many of these we're gonna wanna make, but once we got the launch pad and all that, then we'll, we'll kind of configure like how many of these we would like to do. But we do need to make a launch pad, that's for sure. So that's pretty easy to do. I believe that the launch pad has to be five by five. So 25, there we go. Turns out that uh, I need scaffolding to make the launch tower and I have no bamboo. I'm gonna have to buy scaffolding. I'm literally making rocket launchers here and I don't have bamboo. I can't just make this up. That's kind of funny. Uh, let me just go quickly buy myself some because you know, we can we, we can afford to frick I don't have any silver on me. Oh it's really I'm I'm realizing all of my flaws here as as we get down to the end. Um yeah you see I don't need to buy diamonds. I need to buy wait I did I did bamboo not scaffolding. Whatever. That's fine. All right, there we go. And then give me lots and lots of bamboo so I can make scaffolding, please. Thank you, okay, much appreciated. Perfect, there we go, I did it. I feel like five is probably enough because the, the tower goes vertically. So just, um, you only need, I think, one stack of the launch towers. They're basically scaffolding, but it's for a, a rocket. I believe if I do the guidance computer, there's a ponder and it'll actually show you how to, yeah, it shows you how to set up the entire platform, which we have done. Uh, we have done this with advanced rocketry in other series before. It's just the textures here are a little bit different. They're pretty fancy. And the amount of work that we had in, in order to like make this was a whole series worth, but man, it's gonna feel satisfying when we get trapped on the moon. <laughs> so yeah, we got how many? That's five there, is that six? That's six. Oh, whatever, we can do just just, we can do one more recipe for good measure there. Now we'll have 10 just in case. Last step here is we need to make the rocket assembling machine. Okay. And rocket assembly machine coming together. And then, okay, so the last things we need to do is just basically figure out how many of each of these we're gonna want. Well, at least we're gonna need like one seat, probably. Give it your best. After all, this is the final contraption you've been working towards. Do we wanna make it pretty? But it also says don't do anything fancy. 
probably don't do powered ME controllers and stuff like that. Probably your rocket's not gonna end up all rainbowy. It's just gonna frick up, I would assume. <laughs> don't make it out of like the, the brass machines or something like that. Like, I'm gonna make my rocket out of these. I bet it'll go really well. <laughs> It's like, can you imagine crashing your save and permanently destroying it at the last step? That would be great fun. Anyway, for this one here, we need to make a gas charge pad. That's pretty simple. Gas charge pad. Do we, I don't have the slab, but we should have the smooth stone. Cool. So that's that. But then the other part is where it's more complex and we have to do the oxygen production, which I just don't know like how you sort out what gas is going to export out of what side here. But since we've already, we've done that setup in the nether, we just did another blaze setup here. I might, um, I might save that for the next episode. However, we're on the home stretch. We have four blocks here and we're just basically like 500 millibuckets away from the final computation matrix to be able to make the guidance computer. We're on the home stretch here. Actually, what I can do is in the time it takes to produce the remaining 500 millibuckets, I can just do some diamond currency exchanging so that I can, uh, you know, just, oh, these don't stack on top of each other. Um, so that I can uh, get the remaining couple of diamond gears, but I believe this brings us up to, yep, that's seven. Dude, oh my God, it really is the home stretch. I'm gonna have to, yeah, set up this whole auto crafting system and get this good to go. Hold on, let me just do a currency exchange here. Let me just buy my way to the uh, few remaining diamonds rather than strip mining. Also, yes, I know I've seen a lot of the comments saying, you know, just do villager trades, then you can melt down, can melt down the diamonds and stuff like that, um, or melt down the armor and, and all that, but I can just also buy my way. And that's eight gold. And then let's get our diamond trade. And I think it's right, it's just one gold per diamond. Can I actually, hold on, let me do a resonant. I think I have a resonant just like floating around here that I made and actually didn't need to use. And there we go, easy. That was super unnecessary, but it wasn't being used anyway. I'm sure something else could benefit from it, but there we go, eight diamonds. Let's make our two diamond gears here. We've got enough matter plastics, I think. We just need one more ME controller. And now we're almost there. 750 millibuckets, it's so close. Wait, let me just uh, just inch it up a little bit faster, 10% faster. Oh, right, and then obviously I need to set this up. This is, this is the whole reason why I like uh, dug this area out the size that I did, because we gotta do this whole uh, setup situation. So how, like, it's basically just a, it's a ring around an empty spot, essentially. So I think this will work and then that's it. That's the final one. Okay, uh, the question is, do I want to, here, let me actually, I, I guess, remove the stuff over here <clears throat> real quick so that we're not actually like overproducing. I just started putting all the rocketry stuff into a chest here, um, just so I can kind of keep track of it. And then stop, stop the presses. We've done it. That's it. That's all, that's the final one. Oh my God, I can't believe that we're here. The only bummer is it's not gonna actually check the quest off because we don't have all the pre Rack's done yet, but no big deal. Here we go. Uh, computation matrix. That's eight. That's eight, everybody. Oh my goodness. We've done the thing. And now, somewhat premature. Well, let's get this one done. The planet ID chip. Planet ID chip. That's easy enough. So it's just a piece of quartz and a calculation. I, I'm pretty sure we can actually just do that in this big setup over here like that, right? Or or not. Wait, I can, uh, I can just isolate this though. <laughs> then replace everything else. And there we go. Cool. I probably should have just done that after, but it's one of the prerequisites. So it felt, it felt better to do it before, you know, if that makes any sense. Um, it's like the easiest of all the prerequisites that we have to do here. All right, and now the main event. We'll put in the guidance computers last, but I think it's like that and it's like that. And then what is it for everything else? Just surround it, ME controller at the bottom. All right, this is big. Surround it by the matter plastics. And then here it is, everybody. Here it is. 
put in the computational matrixes. We've done the math. We know how to get to the moon. We we did the calculus. People were like, why are you doing math in a YouTube video? This is the worst thing. But it's all paid off. Here we go. It's happening, everybody. I got a screenshot. I got a screenshot. The main event, the big process. I don't know if this will actually be the thumbnail, but we're memorializing. Probably saw in the chat just so many screenshots I took earlier of like everything going on in there for thumbnails. You gotta be thinking about the thumbnails, okay? It's very important. Watch. It's all slowly coming together for the final big piece. We did it! We don't even get the advancement because um, we need to do the other stuff first. And also we need to make, we need to, oh, we need to get a flag for this to be viable anyway. Okay, well, that gives us something to think on. You can leave your comments as to what you think I should do for the flag here. But I think that's a good place to wind down the episode. We got our guidance computer. We've done most of the other prerequisites. This is silly needing it in a bucket. We'll sort that out between episodes. So in between episodes, we need to generate more fuel. And then we also just need to um, beautify. And the next episode, we make our oxygen, we build our rocket, and we go crazy. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next one. Stay tuned.